Hey everybody, this is Mike here. I'm the lead organizer of the Toronto-based meetup group Techalicious, welcoming you to our second YouTube video. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be creating a bunch of Perl one-liners. What's a Perl one-liner? So right now I'm in my IDE of choice, so it's my integrated developer environment of choice, and uh, I'm creating a pretty standard program. It's the classic Hello World program. This is probably what you're, what you're used to. And um, that's a normal program. A Pro One Liner, on the other hand, that's a program that exists exclusively in the uh, basically command line. So it's the same idea, uh, I'm, but I'm launching Perl directly. I'm going to give it an argument of E. I'm going to put uh, quotes around it. And I'm going to do the same thing pretty much. But as you can see, hello world. It exists completely in the command line. Now, why is this useful? So for system administration stuff, quick edits, things like that, this is really a cool, neat feature that you can do this, like for parsing logs, um, just really quick programs. Like it does a really good job at like editing config files if you have to do a whole bunch of edits. Um, now, the Perl one-liner on the command line relies heavily on uh, Perl um, special variables. Perl has all these really cool shortcut variables. It kind of looks like sorcery. Once you get the hang of it though, incredibly useful. All right, so our use case scenario for this video will be the following. Now, there was a website that existed um, on the internet, it no longer does, and it's called um, users.aristotle.net slash diogenes. I think that was the exact URL, let me just see. Yeah, right here. So this website here, uh, I found it once, I don't even know why or how or what was going on, but I found it at like three in the morning and it pretty much, uh, as you can see, uh, why do you wanna know the meaning of life? And it asks you all these questions and you follow the links. And it was pretty like, it was a really good read. So I just remembered recently, I'm like, wow, I remember that website and I looked for it and it was gone. But as you can see, it's on my screen right now. How I managed to retrieve it is there's a nice website out there called the Internet Archive. So you can visit this site and you can pretty much search for any website you want and uh, it most likely will have a snapshot, at least one or two of it, for you to check on previous iterations of the site. So like even live sites right now. So if we visit, let's try Microsoft actually. If we go to microsoft.com, let's see what they got with that. Microsoft, so yeah, so look at this. Wow, they got lots. So we can go all the way back, whoa, to 1996. And do that, and the, oh yeah, let's see. Let's check out Microsoft in 1996. Wow, that, I wish the uh, images worked. That is amazing. Let's see another one. Let's try the 20th and the 26th. Pretty awesome. So this is a pretty cool website, awesome feature. And I was able to recover the site that I was looking for, which is great. So I saved it locally. And as you can see, this is the local copy of the thing. And I noticed that on the top here, it has this um, bar. And I'm like, I don't want that bar. And also, if you actually hover over these links, they're actually going to back to the Internet Archive website. And I don't want that. I want a totally local copy. I want to do some edits on these um, files to A, get rid of this header, and B, fix all the links. Now, I could just go in and edit it manually, but then that might take a lot of time because there's a whole bunch of pages here, there's more pages here, and I wanna be a little more savvy than that and create like a really cool script. So, that's what we're gonna do. So for the first step, I'm gonna correct these URLs. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy the link address, and I'm gonna open my favorite program, and hopefully yours, RegXRx. So basically this is a program to help debug regular expressions. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm gonna be doing a search based off of these regular expressions, and then I'm gonna do some replacements. Uh, in this case scenario, all I really want is this last URL. So this stuff I believe is the same throughout, so I can use that, a literal match. I guess you're, you should pretty much put um, the escape characters on the periods to make them literal as opposed to um, the, the dot in regular expressions is like a wild card. It's not necessary because I don't think anything else will match this, but I'm just going to do it to uh, do it the correct way. And then I just want to do a capture group. Uh, it's going to capture it as a variable in memory. Um, and we're probably gonna do it like this. I'm gonna make a character class. I'm gonna say everything but a period, and then I'm gonna go plus, make it non-greedy, and then I'm gonna do a literal uh, period, and then I'm gonna go htm. 
So there we go. That was enough to do a perfect match. That's my code. I'm going to copy that. And I know previously I said that the one-liners are to be just run in the actual command line. I'm actually going to run it in the in my IDE, but I'm going to run it as a um, basically a shell script. And a shell script, think of it if you're from Windows, like a batch file, you're doing the same thing. You're running um, the program. It's the programs themselves. Like if I go, um, let me see here. If I do like, a, I don't know, an LS, for example, run it. It's going to show. See, it's as if I was running it on the command line. It's kind of funky looking in terms of the spacing, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. And I find this gives me a lot more uh, flexibility in terms of leaving comments or whatnot. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to put this down here, the regular expression. I'm going to start building this. So let's just try find. Why not? Find star.htm. I believe that will give us a list. There we go. A list of all the different... Um, uh, HTML files we want to edit. I want to pipe it to Perl, and the pipe is just basically like a, it's redirecting the output of find to Perl. Uh, in this case, I want to do add a few arguments here. I want to do n and e. So what is this n argument? E was execute, if you recall. But uh, n, so let's see here. Um, n is pretty much doing something like this. It's actually creating a, a loop around the whole code, which is incredibly useful because you don't have to write it out. And what kind of loop is it creating? It's creating a while loop. And the while loop pretty much looks like this. So it's the diamond operator, which reads from standard in by default. Uh, it also reads from a special variable called argv. And it actually will open up the files for you automatically, which is pretty cool. So that's what it's doing for me right here. It's uh, creating this loop, but I don't have to type it out. Pro one-liners for the win. And there we go. So that's it so far. And if I run this, you're not going to see nothing because Perl isn't doing anything with that output. If I put print, this it'll start getting a little more interesting. Same sort of output. Now we got it. So now we got to start modifying things. So let's see here. I'm going to do a match. So let's see if I match it to this stuff here. All right. So if I go print if this matches. Um, let's see here. So what's it going to do? It's going to do nothing. It broke. So let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to change the delimiter to something I'm definitely not using. I'm going to print, let's see if I print this. It doesn't print anything. Perfect. All right, so this is not working. What's going on? So the find command is looking for all these HTM files, piping it to Perl. It's trying to um, do a match and look for this URL. And it's capturing in a capture group the names of the URLs, the HTM files. But it's not going to work because all this is doing right now is it's spitting out the names of the files and standard out. Perl is, is just reading the file names. What I want to do is I want Perl to open the file names. And then this will make more sense because it's going to be searching inside the files. So I'm going to add in a handy uh, tool here called xargs, which is promptly going to format and input them into Perl. So now Perl will open them, the files itself. I can prove that by just going print now let's erase all this print and it didn't work because there is this thing here so let's do that so as you can see it's now printing all the contents of all the files which is exactly what we want so now we're dealing with that and let's put this back to how it was and there we go. So this thing here, if you haven't seen it before, it simply means print the last capture group that matched, or sorry, the last capture group. And that's the, there's, since there's only one, it's just printing it out. Uh, normally you'd put them, you'd use them by number, or you can name them and invoke them by name. But for now, we're just going to do, actually we'll do it by one, because what I'll do as well, is I'll add another capture group around the rest of it. And I'll do something like this, just to show you that okay so it's kind of messy so we have to add a new line so i gotta do that and then there we go so font's kind of big let's make it a little smaller but as you can see all the urls are being detected properly so that's good so what we can do now is we actually have to do some modification here so instead of actually doing matches against it we don't want that 
we actually want to do the do replaces. So we're going to add that. We're going to add just the two. And this should be enough to do a replacement on all the URLs. And all I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm, I'm basically I'm matching the URL. And all I'm, do, I'm all replacing with is the second match in this case. And that is just the name here of the actual htm file. We have to do some modifications here. We have to change this argument here to print. So that basically means it's just going to be printing out. Um, I think it prints out the default variable. Hmm. And uh, basically, it's, so the difference between the two, I'll explain it. It goes through the loop. It's like this. Better do a visual. So as I said before, it was while like that. That's what the end did. And then the P just added a print statement. So I guess it's going to, yeah, if you just leave it like that, it's, it's basically printing out the default variable. Okay. So why am I doing that? Because I got to add another thing called I. This is actually going to invoke inline mode. I'm going to go back. It's actually going to make a backup of everything. So this is how to write it here. It's going to inline edit all the files that I'm opening. It's going to print them back. It's printing it to the file. That's what's going on. So, okay. So let's see here. So if I run this, so it, it didn't complain. Let's go back to the browser itself. So if I hover over here, you see on the bottom, let's just hover, right click copy to see what's going on. It still says that because I got to refresh. So I refresh the page locally. I right click on it. As you can see now, the links should say, yep. So if I click on the link, this is all local now. It's no longer on the server. Perfect. So there's an example, a really cool example of something you can do with a one-liner. But uh, let's not stop there. Let's continue because I want to get rid of this wackiness at the front. So that's what's going to be next. All right. So how are we going to get rid of this stuff at the top? Okay. First step, let's view the page source and see what's going on here exactly. Now I'm looking for some sort of pattern or something that we could use that would make this a little easier to cut out. Let's see. Do title. Where does the body begin? Let's look for the body. Uh, let's see here. The body begins here. So what is going on here? So let's let's grab all this all the way to what is the question. And okay, so they have a nice little tag that sort of depicted the beginning and the end of the toolbar. So I can start, I just have to remove all this stuff. And as I said before, you can edit it manually, but that's that's a lot of work. And we're going to use some Perl one-liner magic to take care of this for us. So Gonna paste this stuff in. I am going to add some random stuff on the top and the bottom just to get a nice visual when I match it. You'll see in a moment, random, whatever. Now let's see here. So we wanna find, in this case, let's erase the old stuff. We wanna find this. So it starts with this, so no problem. I'm gonna do a, um, this is, I'm just escaping the space. I don't have to do that, but I'm going to. And then I'm going to add some modes to this. Free space mode. Now I do have to um, um, escape spaces. Free space mode means I can just, I got, I can put it on multi lines as opposed to writing out a regular expression on one line. So let's see here. So let me see. I'm going to do case insensitivity, not really required. I'm going to do, which one should I do? I'm going to do this one. This one lets you um, basically, when you do your wild cards, like that's, this is a dangerous one, but it's it does it, um, this normally matches, okay, what's going on here? This matches any character. This matches any character zero or more times. This is uh, one or more times. Uh, by default, it's greedy, means it just tries to grab as much as it can. This makes it non-greedy. As you can see, it doesn't go as far. And this thing basically makes this thing go multi-line. Um, by default, the um, the dot character doesn't uh, like gobble up multi lines, but now it does because of this. So this is very dangerous because you could grab things. By dangerous, I mean simply that you could match things that you don't want to match. So you got to be really, you got to be careful. So let's see. Go to the bottom. All we want to do is pretty much match to this thing. So let's do this. Let's escape some of these spaces that I see. Escape, 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 escape. And then add this. 
Let's do the plus because it requires that. So basically we've matched everything all the way up to the bottom random as you can see here. And then if I go to the top of this match, yep, there we go. So that's what we want. So this is our regular expression that we're gonna put into our one-liner to get rid of all this stuff. And it's pretty much the same thing. So let's go back to our program, our script. Um, I'm gonna paste it here. So this is a pretty good program. I'm going to comment it out. And we're going to grab the stuff because I'm gonna be lazy and not have to type it all in again. And this time all we're doing is we're not gonna be replacing it with anything because I wanna delete it. And all we're gonna do is put this in right here. We're gonna paste it in there. And that's pretty much it. And let's run it and hope it works. So it didn't complain. So let's go back to the browser itself. Meaning of life, fingers crossed. Well, that didn't work. Um, so why is that? Let's find out. So let us go back to the code itself and let's have a look here. So yeah, this should be working by, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is what's going on. Um, by default, what this is doing, it's actually just, it's looping through it, right? But it's reading one line at a time. We can't do that. One line at a time is not gonna cut it. So what we have to do is we have to change the way this is doing this. We have to add a G for global, so it actually keeps iterating through it multiple times. And then we're gonna have to actually add this at the beginning, begin. So what this is gonna do, before that loop structure starts here, right? It's actually going to uh, run this code in this begin thing. So in begin, we're gonna have to change the way um, it uh, it interprets opening up files. So instead of actually um, opening up to the new line, new line, new line, I'm gonna change it to undefined. It's, it's just like what's called slurp mode. It's gonna open up the whole file at once. This can be kind of dangerous if the file's really big. That's why it, I guess by default it's breaking it up per line. But this is not gonna work because we have to see, uh, you saw our regular expression, it's matching multiple lines, right? Well, I got rid of it here, but it's matching multiple lines. So it's basically loading it up one line at a time. This won't match because it doesn't see this till much later on. That's what's going on. At least I hope so. Let's run it. Didn't complain. Let's go to the file. Cross our fingers again. Here we go. Oh yeah. So basically we did it. Awesome. So as you can see, the header is now gone. The Wayback Machine headers is uh, no longer there. And if we look at the code, it is definitely not there anymore. Pretty awesome. So that's pretty cool. So we might have to tweak it to get it perfect for all the different pages. Uh, I kind of went fast and loose there and just um, made this uh, wild, wild card. Uh, it's probably best to test it a bit more, but for all intents and purposes, that's how you do it. And that pretty much demonstrates what you can do with uh, Perl one-liners. As this um, YouTube channel grows, I'm gonna be doing a lot of different uh, uh, use case scenarios with Perl one-liners, which I'll share with you. If anybody has any like questions or if you have any uh, um, ideas for things you want parsed or anything like that, feel free to email me anytime. I'll put the email on the side right now and um, that's about it if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like subscribe share with your friends and if you're in the Toronto area don't forget to check out our meetup group it's meetup.com slash techalicious thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon